And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of all those gathered here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Who is Jesus? That's the question of the day. Who do people say that Jesus is, and who do you say that Jesus is? Everyone's got an opinion, whether they're a Christian or not, about who Jesus is. And most of us probably have a, a default Jesus we think about, right? Uh, maybe it's uh, the Da Vinci portrait that's sitting in my office right now. Maybe that's your default Jesus. Or maybe it's the compassionate Jesus, the Jesus who sees the poor and downtrodden and is moved to give them hope and comfort and healing. Or maybe it's uh, the teaching Jesus, the Jesus who gives instruction of how to live a godly life, how to live according to God's will. Or maybe it's the rebuking Jesus, the Jesus who calls sinners to repentance. No matter what your default Jesus is, you know it's not really a whole picture. It's not a complete image of who Jesus is. And a major part of being a Christian is taking time to learn who Jesus is, moving past our preconceived notions, our basic initial idea of who Jesus is, and really see him as the full three-dimensional person that he uh, reveals himself to be. And people are complicated, right? That's the understatement of the morning. And if you add to the fact that Jesus is God, we've got layers of complexity to Jesus. He is so much bigger than anything we can imagine or comprehend. And as you grow in faith, and as you grow in knowledge of him, when you're asked the question of who do you say Jesus is, well, it can get a lot harder to answer that question because Jesus is so vast. But we spend time getting to know Jesus as Christians. And how do you get to know someone? You spend time with them. Now, I have several people who I call my best friend. Uh, people may try to tell you that you can only have one best friend, but that's nonsense. You can have multiple best friends. Uh, and besides my dad, and besides Bridget, uh, my best friend is probably a guy named Galen Franks. And we have been friends for 25 years this year. A quarter of a century. We met in eight, at eight years old in Sunday school. And in middle and high school, we were actually next door neighbors. It was a very rare day that we weren't at one or the other's house. We spent so much time together that people actually thought we were brothers. And with all this time we spent together, we did the normal teenager things. We played video games, we watched movies, we drove around town totally not getting into mischief and trouble. <laughs> but through it all, really what we spent most of our time doing was talking. And sometimes it was just joking and cutting up, you know, as guys do. Uh, sometimes we were just shooting the breeze, really not talking about anything at all. Uh, maybe the movie we'd just gone to see or uh, whatever. But a lot of the time we spent talking about deep and important stuff, really bearing our souls to one another. In a lot of ways, Galen probably knows me better than even Bridget does. And so if you want to know who I am, you could probably give Galen a call and he'd give you a pretty good idea. He could also probably tell you some things I don't want you to know, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but if you go out to the street and you ask a hundred random people, who do you say Jesus is? You'll probably get 99 different answers. 
And that's optimistic, that two people would have the same answer. But it's kind of like a game of Family Feud. Who do you say Jesus says? Survey says? But really, there are just this huge, this huge diversity of opinions about who Jesus is. And in our modern culture, where everyone's truth is valid, and what's true for me might not be true for you, people really believe that their version of Jesus is just as valid and true as any other. And you might hear the phrase, my Jesus, get thrown around. Well, you see, my Jesus wouldn't do this, or my Jesus would never teach that, or my Jesus tells me. And maybe sometimes they're right. Maybe it is sometimes something that Jesus would teach or say or do, but very rarely is it the whole picture. Because the world has taken a real three-dimensional Jesus and made him into this 2D character instead of a real person. They've made a Jesus that fits into a nice, comfortable little box where he never challenges them, never expects anything of them, and they can just keep him there, nice and comfortable. And instead of taking the time to get to know him, they have made a Jesus in their own image. They don't know the real Jesus. They just know the character they've created. Instead of being conformed to him and transformed by him. And our gospel reading today asks this very question, and virtually nothing has changed. 2,000 years ago, people didn't understand who Jesus was, and today, they don't understand who Jesus is. So they make guesses, they have their preconceived notions of uh, who Jesus is or what they think he should be, or they've heard a few things, and so then that's the Jesus they know, and they try to fit him into their conception of the world, how they understand things, instead of seeing the vastness of Jesus. Now, back in the first century, Folks heard Jesus, they saw what he did, and they thought he was a prophet, which Jesus was a prophet because what is a prophet but one who speaks for God? Only he's more than a prophet because when Jesus talks, God is speaking because Jesus is, in fact, God. Nowadays, the survey might say, who is Jesus? Survey says, a good teacher. Yes. He had some great ideas about how to live life, how to treat one another. Jesus could be a great life coach. He will make you a good person, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Right? If that's all Jesus is, if all Jesus is is a good teacher, a philosopher, He's no different from Socrates, or Aristotle, or Confucius, or Benjamin Franklin, or Mr. Feeney. Okay, I see a few of you watched sitcoms in the 90s. If that's the case, Jesus is just one choice among many. Jesus is just another teacher that you can choose and decide to follow and learn from. Now, Jesus was a teacher, is a teacher. Don't get me wrong. L read the Sermon on the Mount. It's got lots of instruction. But that's not all Jesus is. Who is Jesus? Survey says. A revolutionary. An activist. Someone who sees the world and turns it upside down. He sees the political institutions of the religious institutions of his day and he is going to overthrow the tyrants. They see a Jesus whose entire mission is to subvert the order and status quo. 
They compare him to Gandhi, maybe, a peaceful uh, revolutionary trying to free his people, or Che Guevara, or Maximilien Robespierre, who in the French Revolution uh, executed Henry XVI and Marie Antoinette. A couple years later, he himself would be executed, but that's not the point. Or they see him as a, a Vladimir Lenin, bringing in a new order to uh, usher in a populist revolt. Or maybe John Lennon. Now, Jesus was a revolutionary, don't get me wrong, but the, he did not bring an earthly revolution. It wasn't a political revolution. No, he came into the world and saw the status quo of sin and death, and he turned the world upside down. He put an end to their power in the world. His revolution brought people to repentance and salvation. If all Jesus was is a political or religious activist, he's just one more in a long line of people trying to overthrow those in power, but that's not all he is. I could go on, but you get the point. The point is, people think they know who Jesus is, without taking the time to get to know him. And they try to make him fit into their world rather than fitting themselves into his world. Jesus then turns the question, who do you say that I am? And Peter takes the lead. He answers for the group. And he says, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. Ten words. A simple statement. But it's elegant, isn't it? It's profound. And in its simplicity, it is all-encompassing. You see, Jesus didn't try to... Uh, explain everything he learned about Jesus in the three years he followed him. He didn't have this nice, detailed theological treatise. No. He makes a confession of faith that even a small child can make. A confession of faith that shows he knows who Jesus is. In a way, it almost echoes the answer Moses gets from the burning bush when he asks, who do I tell people sent me? And God says, I am who I am. Simple and profound. Because who is God but the one who is? It's all-encompassing. Now, the biggest difference between Jesus and every other historical figure we can learn from or follow is he's not dead. Jesus is more than a teacher. He is more than a philosopher. He's more than a prophet. He is more than a re revolutionary. All those other people I listed, any other pe person from history either died or will die and stay dead. But not, that's not the case with Jesus. All these other people you can learn from, they come and tell you what you have to do. Here's what you need to do to be wise, to live a good life, to change the world. But Jesus says, here is what I did. I took your sins from you. I made you righteous. I give you forgiveness. I died for you. And only he can do these things through his suffering and death on the cross. But he didn't stay dead. Gandhi is dead. Vladimir Lenin is dead. The Buddha is dead. Rose Pierre, even Moses, is dead. 
but Christ is alive. He is risen. He is Lord. And he has told us who he is. Peter's confession is simple but profound. And it is the confession on which the church itself is built. Jesus the Christ is Lord. In Scripture, that is a title reserved only for God. When reading the Hebrew Scriptures, any time there was an instance of God's name, instead of saying it, instead of saying Yahweh, the ancient Hebrews would say Adonai, which is the Hebrew word for Lord. The apostles knew this because they had spent time with Jesus. They followed him around. They didn't have a complete understanding. We'll see that next week in our gospel lesson. But they give us a model for how to live as disciples and how to get to know Jesus, and that's spending time with him, just like you get to know anyone. Now, unfortunately, we can't just call Jesus up and say, hey, you want to hang out? I mean, we can, but it's a little different. There are ways we spend time with him, even though he is ascended and reigning in heaven. Well, when you pray, you are, in fact, spending time with Jesus. When you come together for worship, where two or three are gathered in his name, there Jesus is. When you listen to his word, whether you're reading it or you're hearing it, whether you're uh, listening to a podcast, whether you're listening to a sermon, when Jesus gives himself to you body and soul in the Lord's Supper, you are taking Jesus bodily into you. When you get together to study the Bible, when you study Scripture, when you talk about your faith with one another, that's one reason why Bible study is so important, whether it's Sunday morning or through the week. By spending time with Jesus, you get to know Him, and the Holy Spirit works in you. He makes you a disciple and gives you more than just knowledge. He gives you faith, a faith that saves you. And the more you learn about Jesus, the more you learn about who he really is, the more you realize you just can't understand him. Not fully. You come to realize that Jesus is bigger than anything you can ever imagine. And that's why he commends the faith of a child. That's why Peter's simple confession is met with Jesus' words, Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but the Spirit of my Father. The more time you spend with Jesus, the deeper your relationship becomes. You see Jesus for who he really is and that you cannot fit him into a nice little box and conform him to what you think he should be. He's too big for that. And so when someone asks, who do you say Jesus is? You could try to fully explain everything you know about Jesus. You could try to explain the non-reciprocity of the Gainus Maestaticum. But maybe the purest confession of faith is also the simplest. So, who do you say that Jesus is? Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you for being the God who is greater than anything we can imagine. The God who is big enough to take our sins from us, to make us one with you. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being a God that we don't have to fully understand, but to have the simple faith of a child. That's enough. Amen.